Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to this virtual community meeting regarding the my slide changed. Uh, regarding this, the upcoming Stop 6 uh, Poly Oversight Echo Heights Street Improvements Project. My name is Greg Robbins, and I'm a project manager with the City of Fort Worth Transportation and Public Works Department. On the call as well are uh, representatives from the Fort Worth Water Department, uh, the engineering consultant, the contractor, the city's construction inspector, and they'll be around at the end to help answer any questions that you might have. Uh, with us as well, we have Sandy, who's the district director for Council District 5. Um, Sandy, would you like to say a few words before we get kicked off? There we go. Thank you to everybody for attending this meeting. Um, as he shared, this meeting is recorded. So if you have any neighbors that were not able to join tonight, they'll be sending a link out or maybe putting it on the city website so you can go back and see the presentation and hear what's said. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, so like she said, this meeting is being recorded. So um, it'll, it'll be on the city's YouTube uh, webpage. You can just go to YouTube and type, type in city of Fort Worth and you will, um, and, and you'll be able to find it. And there will be a project page created for this as well. Um, you can find it on the City of Fort Worth website and we'll host the video there as well or, or put a link to it. Um, and I'll, I'll have the website at the end. And I think my video shut off. I'm not sure why. There we go. Okay, so this presentation, this meeting is meant, meant to provide you with some information about the scope of this project that's happening in your area and provide you with information regarding the upcoming construction and the schedule. So here's the agenda that I'm hoping to cover in my brief presentation. I'll be talking about the project as a whole, providing a summary of the improvements on each street uh, associated with the project, talking about the construction process, discussing the expecting, expected schedule moving forward, and then blocking some time off the end, like I said, to answer some of your questions and comments and address any concerns that you may have. So first we'll talk about the overall scope of the improvements associated with the project. So um, this uh, project includes four streets that are slated for reconstruction. So they are uh, Burton Avenue from South Houston to East Dead Inn, Crouch Street from Burton Avenue to East Berry Street, Quells Lane from Miller Avenue to South Edgewood Terrace, and Chickasaw Avenue from Miller Avenue to MLK Freeway. So this slide just shows that this all the streets in this project are funded by the 2022 bond. I'll have a little bit more on that later on in the presentation. So on the next couple of slides, I'll discuss the existing conditions uh, present on these streets and give you a breakdown of the proposed improvements for each street. So this slide shows the existing conditions of these streets and why they were slated for reconstruction. You can see from the picture um, the issues that we will be correcting include damaged asphalt pavement, uh, missing or broken curbs and gutters, damaged or missing sidewalk or missing driveways um, or damaged driveways, as well as replacing or upgrading uh, the water and sewer utilities under the street. So now I'll go through each street individually and discuss the improvements that are, are expected to be made. So on Burton Avenue, uh, we're replacing the existing eight inch water line under the street, upgrading the, the six inch sewer to an eight inch. Uh, we'll be providing new concrete pavement uh, with concrete curbs. And, uh, with concrete curbs. Um, we'll be providing new concrete driveways uh, with an 11 foot minimum width, or we'll, we'll match the existing width that you already have. Um, on this street, there will be new uh, five foot sidewalks on one side of the street. It does, it does alternate from one side to the other, but at least one side will have, will have new sidewalks. On Crouch Street, we're, we're, we are replacing the existing eight inch water lines, um, new concrete pavement, uh, new concrete curbs, same thing, new concrete driveways, and uh, a five foot sidewalk on the west side of the street and for portions of the east side. On Quells, <clears throat> we're replacing the portions of the eight and 16 inch water line in the street and also replacing the existing eight and 10 inch sewer. Uh, similar to all the other streets, new concrete pavement, concrete curbs, new concrete driveways, and Quells is getting new five-foot concrete sidewalks on both sides of the street. And finally, on Chickasaw, where we are replacing the existing eight-inch water, 
upgrading the existing, existing six inch sewer to eight inch, um, providing new concrete pavement, new driveways, and a new concrete sidewalk on the south side of the street. All right, so next I'll provide some information about the construction process to give you an idea of what you can expect and answer some frequently asked questions. All right, so why are we doing this project uh, in the first place? Well, in May of last year, the residents of Fort Worth voted to pass a bond program which would fund the street reconstruction projects such as this one and would target locations in the city most in need of improvements. And so, and then when the streets that were in the bond were identified, PPW partnered with the water department to replace the underground utilities also in need of improvements under these streets. As long as we're improving the pavement, we might as well get the underlying utilities as well. So underground utilities, so the water and the sewer are the first phase of the construction process. So be on the lookout for a notice that looks something like this on the screen. The first one will give you a heads up um, that construction will be coming in about a week. And the next one, I will indicate the construction will be happening the next day. So we're going to give you some heads up uh, that construction is coming to your area that you should be on the lookout for, for the uh, contractor to be moving in very, very shortly. So during construction of the water line, there will be times when your service uh, will be interrupted. So the water will be turned off for a few hours when we're transferring you from the existing water line, which you're currently on, to a to a temporary water line. Uh, so um, to be able to continue to provide you water service while we are constructing the new water line. And uh, so the switches, switchovers are done during the day and the contractor is going to let you know when this is about to happen. So here's some information on the new water services that will be installed. Uh, note that we only replace water lines up to your property line and don't make improvements on the private property. So um, we, we replace up to the meter and the meter box itself, but anything past that um, would, would be on the private side of the line. All right. So. Flushing the, the, the new line is an important step in putting a new water line into service. So if you see water running down the street, it could be that the inspector, um, you know, the, the water line is being flushed or the inspector could be getting water samples uh, so we can ensure there's no bacteria present in the new line. So don't, if you happen to see water, water running down the street, don't, don't turn it off. Don't find a, a valve or anything and try to turn it off. So it's completely normal. Don't worry about it. And the, the contractor is, um, is, is taking care of it. So like I said, to be able to keep water service to your home while the new pipe is being installed, we, we will have to run a temporary water service to your house. Um, note that while you are on temporary water, you will be billed based on the average of previous month's usage because the water won't be coming through your water meter. Um, that's how, that's, so that's how you'll be billed. Okay, so will we need access to your property? Most likely we won't, but in the event we do need access for something, we'll contact you first before doing so. Uh, for the new sewer being installed, your sewer service will not be interrupted during construction. Uh, we'll be installing new services to each property and installing a new clean out at the property line. So here's a diagram that shows which portion of the new sewer the city owns and maintains. Uh, similar to kind of to what I was talking about with the water line and the water service, there are portions that the city owns and then the path the water meter is what you own. Similar here, um, the city owns, um, or the city is responsible for the, the sewer service up to the clean out that I mentioned that we're gonna install at your property line. So some of you may be wondering how we deal with existing irrigation systems. If your existing system is near to the street, the contractor will have to cut and cap your sprinkler lines prior to construction. Uh, if the contractor breaks or, or, or caps your irrigation system, they'll be the ones to fix it when the construction is complete. So 
So here's some information regarding the improvements that are being made above ground. All, uh, all curbs on this project will be replaced. For existing driveways, the city will replace portions that are in the city right away. Um, all new driveways will be 11 foot wide at minimum or will match what you currently have. Most streets are, are getting new sidewalk on at least one side of the road, like I mentioned. Um, and a couple of uh, quails is getting sidewalk on both sides of the road. So another com question we commonly get is whether you'll have access to your driveway. So um, unfortunately, uh, there will be times when access is limited. You won't have you won't be able to access it when your driveway itself is being replaced, as well as when the pavement in front of your house is being installed. Uh, the contractor and inspector will let you know when that is going to happen, so that you can either make uh, you, you make other parking arrangements or, or move your car to it to a different location, so you don't come home to a surprise that day. All right, so the contractor, prior to them getting started with construction, is going to be making a pre-construction video uh, just to document the existing site conditions and, and making sure that, um, that they're aware of what the site looked like beforehand so we can try to make it, uh, uh, restore it back to similar conditions when we're done. Um, we also encourage property owners to go ahead and take pictures and videos of their, of their yard and the, the, any items you have fronting the street right now. Um, that way you have a record of that prior to us starting construction. Uh, when the contractor is doing work in the street, there will be some temporary lane closures. Um, when this happens, signs will be posted to keep drivers aware uh, that the work is occurring. Also on this slide, I have the construction hours. So the, the contractor's hours of, of operations are from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. On, on weekdays. And if, if, if Saturday work is requested, their hours on Saturday are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, if the contractor is working in your street when trash is to be collected, they'll help you out by making sure that your bins are, are moved to, to another, moved to a location where they can be picked up, whether that's just on the other side of the road or just moving them to, you know, the other side of the driveway or just getting them out of the way um, for, from where they're working to make sure that they can get picked up. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the construction phasing and the anticipated schedule. All right, so utilities will be installed first. So that will be the, the water and sewer lines. After they are all installed and connected, there will be a temporary paving patch put in place until the street is ready to be paved. You can see that in the, in the picture on the right, there's that asphalt patch going on, on down the road. That's a, that's a temporary pavement patch that'll get, that'll get replaced once we come back and do the pavement. Right, so as I mentioned, each street is going to be is going to be paved with concrete. So for concrete streets, all the existing pavement, curbs, and driveways will be excavated first. Then the the pavement and and the curb will be installed together. We call that being installed monolithically. It, it's all part of one one pavement system. So there's the, the curb and the and the new pavement are connected together. Uh, the contractor will most likely do half the street at a time, so that um, the other side will still have access while the new concrete cures. And then finally, they'll come back and install the new driveways. And here's an example of what sort of what you can expect the new concrete streets to look like when it is finished. And here's an example of what you expect the new um, um, sidewalks and, and, and wheelchair ramps to look like that'll be installed along with the construction. Okay, so here's the anticipated schedule broken down by street. Construction activities will begin on March 27th and are expected to run through April 2024. The first, uh, first street that's anticipated uh, to start with is Chickasaw. So that'll be from, from March until July of this year. Contract will then move to Burton and Crouch together. And they'll, so they'll start this, the utilities 
on on Burton first in April, and then start and then move to Crouch to start utilities in June, and then probably most likely pave them together, ending around October of this year. Finally, they'll be moving on to Quails, which which is the longest street in the contract, um, and being uh, being in that street from around June to to April when the contract finishes, the contract time finishes. So note that the schedule shows several months that your street will be under construction, but that doesn't mean that the construction will be actively ongoing every single day during that time period. Um, there will be times when utilities are finished and, and that crew is out of the way and the paving crews will be coming, be coming later. So just because it says, you know, my street is gonna be under construction for, for five months, that doesn't mean active construction all the time. Uh, but that, those, those are the streets that, or those are the time frames that you can expect the project to start and end on your streets. Um, I also want to say that that as of right now, this is the the contractor's best estimate of his of his schedule. Um, some, it, hopefully we will be able to keep this. It, it it could be subject to some change, but this is what we're gonna what we're hoping to accomplish. Okay, so now we come to the end, end of the presentation, and we'll move on to our questions portion of the presentation. So if you if you have if you if there's any questions in chat, we can take those first and then we can get to anyone who may have a question on the phone. So I don't see any questions in chat. So if you would like, if any residents are on the call that would like to unmute themselves and ask a question, now would be the time. When you say that the driveways will be done, will the whole driveway up to the house be done or just portion closer to the street? So um, the, the, we'll be doing the, the portions closest to the street. It's usually about 10 feet is about how far we go back from the curb. So we'll be, we'll, we'll, we call this the approach or the apron sometimes, but that's the portion that'll be replaced, the part, the part that is in the city's in the city's right away. And like I said, it's approximately 10 feet from the back of the curb. That's what we'll be replacing. Hey Greg, a good rule of thumb on that is just from the street. That's I don't know if there's sidewalks already on that. So usually up to just on the back side of the sidewalk is where a good rule of thumb is where we usually stop. Yes, that's that's a that's a pretty good estimation of, of where it will be. If your if your current sidewalk has a sidewalk section, if your current driveway, excuse me, has a, has a sidewalk section in it, it's usually just past that. For the houses that on the side of, that you're putting the sidewalk on, how will y'all be handling? the mailbox is out on the curve. Uh, you mean as far as um, for mail service or just uh, as far as be them being in the way of construction? Both as far as mail service, you know, when you're laying, when you're all putting out the sidewalk, I don't know what side of the street you're putting it on, on Burton but our mailboxes are out on the curb. And my question is, uh, when y'all laying the sidewalk, how will we get our mail from the mail, from mail service? Okay, does anyone from the contractor want to answer that one? I can answer that. You're, I don't, if it's just a post in the mailbox, we will reset those back to the right-of-way line before they can get mail in them and you can reach them from the back side. And then when it's all over, we'll put them back in neck behind the curb um, where they are now. But you'll have access to them uh, during the construction of the uh, sidewalks and driveways. They'll be set up behind where the sidewalk's going. If it's a brick mailbox, 
or stone or something like that, that's a different situation. Uh, and each one's a little different. We try to move them back far enough for us to pay. We need a foot behind the back of the curb for our paving machine. So we try to set them back between the new curb and this new sidewalk. And then when it's all said and done, we'll set them back next to the curb and level them and do whatever it takes to get them set back where they need to be. If we do happen, if they happen to not stay together, we're pretty lucky most of the time. If they're built right, <clears throat> we can pick them up and set them back and put them back and, and not may not come apart. If they do, we take pictures like Greg said before and all, and that's one thing we have to take extensive pictures of so that we can rebuild that box if it comes apart uh, to the way it was. Right. That, Thank you, that answers your question. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Any other questions? All right, well, um, while we're waiting, maybe there maybe another question will be thought of, but just in the meantime, I'm gonna go to this slide uh, where you can get some more information. So <clears throat> uh, progress on, on the project will be updated on the city's website. And so the link is here in the, in the, in the presentation. So you can, either, you can either write down the link uh, like, like this, or you can just go to the city's website, www.fortworthtexas.gov, enter, that number 102930 that's the, that's the city's project number if you type in that number uh, you'll be able to find it the project will pop up and it, the project has a website with, with information about the project and uh, status updates so that we'll be keeping we'll be keeping updated as we go through the project and like we said at the very beginning of the presentation um, this this video or this presentation is being recorded. It'll be posted on the city's YouTube page and the link will be put on the, the project page on the city's website as well. So you'll be able to watch it again um, if there's any information you wanna refer back to. All right, so um, if there's no more questions, this is um, th this is my contact information. So my, my I'm there at the top, my, that's my phone number. Um, that number also rolls over to my to my cell phone, so you'll be able to reach me uh, either way. I'll, I'll have my phone with me if you if you need anything. That's my uh, email address as well. Um, I also have the information for Cody Horton. He's the construction inspector for the city. Um, his phone number and his email address is there. Um, he'll be the one that's on site most most days. Um, you'll probably see him driving around in the city of Fort Worth truck. So if you happen to see him, you have a question, you can flag him down or just call him. And he, he, like I said, he'll be the first line for you guys. Um, if you have any questions or, or concerns about the project or any of the construction issue uh, items that are ongoing. Um, if not, always feel free to call me. So that, like I said, that's my number. It goes to my cell phone. Um, if you have any problems, feel free to call me. It's not a big, not a big deal. Um, I do see, uh, that there is a hand raised. Do you have another question? Uh, what was the project number again? You switched your screen a little bit too fast. I apologize. I'll go. I'll put it right back, right back up there. Thank you. It, it'll also work if you go there and type in one of your street, uh, you know, the street name, if you live on Burton. Uh, sometimes if you type in Burton in the search bar, it'll pop up, but this is the most direct way to get there.
All right, unless there's any more questions or any other comments that anybody would like to, to throw out there, I'll go ahead and um, adjourn this meeting. Thank you so much for everyone that attended. Um, I'll, I'll leave this screen up for just a second, and then I'll switch over to my to the other screen that had our contact information again here in just a minute or so. That way, if anybody still needs to write it down, uh, they'll get a chance. But thank you so much, um, and I hope everyone has a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can push leave me. Mm -hmm.